Good evening. This is Orson Welles. Just saying hello before the show starts. We hope this finds you well and leaves you better. This is your radio almanac, the first of a new series. An almanac, you'll remember, usually has at least a little bit of just about everything. And, well, that's us. Mostly, we want your almanac to be fun for you, real fun for all of you, wherever you are. This is January 26th, St. Polycarp's Day and the eve of the Feast of St. Christostom. There was a new moon yesterday morning at 8.33 at 4 degrees Aquarius. Our astrology department says for me to tell all you Aquarians who were born this week that you're in for a very active year. They want me to say that everything looks pretty good for you. 156 years ago today, the British settled Australia. I mention these things because they belong in an almanac. And here's another interesting item. Three weeks ago today, exactly, Dick Tracy was kidnapped by Flat Top. <laughs> Homely philosophy and nuggets of wisdom come later, along with Groucho Marx. January 26th, our time, 1944, is the date Groucho Marx appears on this show at the sign of the Flying Red Horse. Uh, 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 uh. I beg your pardon? I said, uh, 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 uh. It's very pretty, but what does it mean? Well, it means we just can't tolerate this sort of thing. You see, I'm from upstairs. My name is Mr. Trivers. Trivers? Tri oh, yes, the censor. The censor, better known as vice president in charge of... That's dirty. <laughs> What's on your mind, Mr. Trivers? We've told you a dozen times, Mr. Wells, that there's some things you can't do in radio. Why, what have I done? What have you done? Last week in your love scenes, you were breathing heavy again. <laughs> I was? Yes, sir. You embarrassed the whole Middle West. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Trivers. It won't happen again. Won't happen again? Look what you're doing now. You've got red horses flying around in uh, here. Now, Mr. Trivers... You can't do that. The flying red horse is symbolic. It's our signature. It opens the program. Let me show you. The makers of mobile oil and mobile gas, with their compliments, invite you to join us. <laughs> invite <laughs> you to join us. <laughs> if you're not careful, Mr. Trivers, you're going to wear out your uh-uh. <laughs> invite you to join us at the sign of the flying red horse. Tonight and every week at the same time over these same stations, the makers of mobile gas and mobile oil bring you Orson Welles. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this particular new moon is a total eclipse of the sun. But despite the conjunction with the moon's south node, Mr. Wells. despite the conjunction with the moon's south node and its opposition to Pluto, which give vent to the foregoing luminaries, the whole some very good aspects. Mr. Wells, immediately after this broadcast, you're to proceed to the lobby of the Wilshire Fish Market, which is having its grand premiere. You will remove your shoes, and at 11.55, imprints of your feet will be preserved for posterity in the fresh cement. There's just one other matter. I have to fill out these forms for Social Security. Now, uh, the name is uh, Orson Wells, and uh, what is your occupation? Uh, well, I'm a dispenser of wit and humor. I bring smiles to people's faces. I make the whole world laugh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unemployed? You can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Might I inquire, Miss? Might I inquire, Miss, who you are and what you're doing here? Well, they sent me over. I'm Miss Grimmett, your new secretary. I don't need a secretary. Who sent you over? Your sponsor. Oh. Oh. Well, pull up a knee and sit down. <laughs> I guess I could use just one more little secretary. Now, on with the show. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that the average family in the United States consists of three and a half persons? Oh, isn't that kind of messy, having a half a person around the house? <laughs> I'd rather you didn't interrupt, Miss Grimmett. This is a radio program. Well, you'd better look over your script first. I've made a few changes. You've made a few changes? Yes. You plan to introduce as your first guest star, Cordell Hall. Yes, I thought I'd start with the Secretary of State and sort of bill from there. Great idea, isn't it? No, I've canceled Cordell Hall. We can replace him with Frank Sinatra. I'm sorry, that's out of the question. <laughs> that's out of the question. We couldn't possibly use Frank Sinatra on this program. These microphones have no handles. <laughs> got enough to do without picking him up. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the next item on your radio almanac is a little philosophical playlist, a drama... Uh, 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 uh. 
A censor again. What's on your mind this time, Mr. Trivers? Oh, we fellas upstairs. We've just been studying your script. Now, this drama you got on for tonight. You can't do that on the air. Why not? Oh, Mr. Wells. What is wrong with the love life of a gypsy moth? Why... Why, the sound effects alone are censorable. What sound effects? Well, take this one you got indicated right here. Yes. Yeah. Sound of two caterpillars necking. That's got to come out. But why? What a wonderful thing. I say, just imagine, if you will, two caterpillars necking. Listen to them. There's a pause, and we hear nothing. Now, see, caterpillars being so soft and silky, they don't make a sound when they're necking. That's what I mean. Much too suggestive. <laughs> Now, what's suggestive about it? These caterpillars aren't making a sound. That's just it. They're being very sneaky about it. All right, we'll cut the caterpillars. Will you see, Lions? You have to have a fish in your pocket. Any other complaints? Yes, scene three. The one about love at first love sight. Love at first sight? Yeah, that's got to come out. Which scene is that? Well, it's this one here. See, where the moth flies into the closet and sees a sweater. Well, that's a charming scene. What's wrong with this? Oh, come now, Mr. Wells. Whose sweater did you really have in mind? <laughs> what do you mean? You know very well, Mr. Wells, that when you put a sweater in this story, you were thinking of only one person. And I don't mean John's other wife. I'm afraid, Mr. Wells, I'll have to cut the whole script. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will send a stamped self-addressed envelope together with two feathers from the wings of the flying red horse and 25 cents to cover handling and mailing, I will send you the censor. Thank you, Miss Grimmett. I don't know about almanacs, but in every radio show along about this point, a charming fellow walks up to the microphone, beats you over the head with a commercial. You heard him, says, Folks, have you tried Perkins Pickles today? <laughs> Why not? Don't you know that Perkins Pickles are tangy? Haven't you heard that Perkins Pickles are cram full of squishy goodness? <laughs> Friends, Perkins Pickles are scientifically grown to contain 108 warts per pickle. <laughs> if Perkins finds a pickle with 107 warts, he throws it away. And remember, Perkins pickles, spelled backwards, reads, Selkip Snickrip. We don't have an announcer like that. We have a fellow, his name is Ray Collins, uh, by a coincidence, very nice boy, unquote, reserved, very reluctant to talk about the product. So let's all give him a nice round of applause. Here he is, Ray Collins. Hello? See what I mean. <laughs> Ray, isn't there something you'd like to say to these lovely people? No. He wouldn't last long with Perkins Pickles. Ray, there must be something you want to say to them. Yes, there is something I'd like to say, but uh, don't you think it's a bit late for us? Not it? at all. It's the time for you to go right ahead. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> well, that's very sweet of you, Ray, but I was thinking of something else. Have you done any 
Any writing lately? Oh, sure. Well, tell the folks about it. Oh, they wouldn't be interested in my bicycle. <laughs> uh, 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 your bicycle is not what I'm talking about, Ray. You drive a car, don't you? Oh, sure. Well, how do you make it go? Why, I turn on the ignition. Uh, well, just what are you getting at, Orson? I, I don't want to be obvious about this, Ray, but when you drive a car and you want to get plenty from your ration coupons, you just... Oh, uh, you uh, mean mobile gas. That's it. America's favorite gas. Right. Oh, well, sure, Orson. With miles of matter, people say mobile gas. Mobile gas is crammed, just crammed full of miles. All the miles it's possible to give you under wartime measures. Oh, sure, other gasolines are good, but all I know is in wartime as in peacetime... Mobile gas remains America's favorite. And 20 million drivers can't be crazy. Why, it looks like love. The way your engine and this master gasoline team up together. The qualities of mobile gas are outstanding with respect to mileage and power. The two things that count most today. On your speedometer, mark the miles you get from every gallon. And is there anything that you want more from gasoline today than mileage? Uh, I think I can say without fear of contradiction, Ray, that's what we want is mileage. Uh, mobile gas, Dr. Wells, mobile gas. Friends, stop in at the sign of the flying red horse. Get your miles worth from your gasoline coupons with mobile gas. Well, thank you very much, Ray. And ladies and gentlemen, there's just one thing I'd like to add. We don't make any exorbitant claims for our product. We're all, ad we're all adults. I don't think any of us are taken in by some types of advertising. However, mobile gas does contain vitamin A. <laughs> no other gasoline can make that statement. <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> pardon me, folks. I just found out we can't make it either. <laughs> Uh, continue now, ladies and gentlemen, with old Dr. Wells' almanac and joke book, Depressing Information Department. In the islands of Hawaii, and this is true, there is a law dating back to King uh, Kamehameha which prohibits lovemaking on the public highways. Encouraging Information Department, powdered glass is not poisonous. Mystery writers, please note, powdered glass is not poisonous. Old Dr. Wells, however, doesn't recommend its use as a substitute for powdered sugar. We interrupt this program, ladies and gentlemen, to bring an interruption. <laughs> Groucho Marx. <laughs> well, 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 Groucho. Uh, thank you not to interrupt my interruptions, Wells. So this is the new Austin Wells program, and you're the new Austin Wells. Well, you don't look new to me. In fact, if I ever saw a used Austin Wells, you're it. <laughs> You're partially correct, Groucho. This is a new program, the uh, Orson Welles Almanac. Oh, it is. Well, did you know, Orson, that yesterday was the 150th birthday of Robert Burns? And after writing poetry for all these years, he winds up in Van Buren, Arkansas, playing a bazooka? <laughs> uh, did you know, Groucho, that Professor Unger Dunger of the Harvard University Sociology Department has just turned in a Ph.D. thesis proving that most people would be better off if they hadn't been born? Yes, but that seldom happens to anybody. <laughs> Uh, Groucho, tell me, what are you doing here? Your sponsor sent me over. Oh, you know my sponsor? Do I know your sponsor? He's over at my house every night drinking Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. <laughs> Had to wait for the second page for that. <laughs> How do you think you got hired? Oh, well, gee, I thought he drank nothing but mobile gas. Uh, <laughs> now that you're here, Groucho, perhaps you can help me with a problem. Where am I going to live out here in California? Why don't you come and stay with me in Beverly Hills? You're joking. What sort of a neighborhood is it? Judge for yourself. On one side of me lives Betty Grable. Oh, who lives on the other side? Who cares? <laughs> I take it you're fond of Betty Grable. Well, I, I lean towards that type. You do? Yeah, I lean towards it, but Harry James keeps pushing me away. <laughs> to get back to you, Orson, something I'm not crazy about, you'll be crazy about my place. <laughs> All modern improvements, gas lighting, inner door mouse traps, and a pot-bellied stove in every room. That is every room except mine. We couldn't get a pot-bellied stove for my room, so we hired Sidney Green Street to stand in the corner. I don't know. Do you think I'd be comfortable there? Why, you'll be as comfortable as a bug in a rug, and we got some of those, too. Well, I'm afraid I couldn't impose on you, Groucho. You see, I left my ration book in New York. What if you haven't got a ration book? I'll take care of you. What's the best food in the world? Milk. 
Where does milk come from? Cows. What do cows eat?